Mercedes seems to have found something extremely good with their newest car concept, as the double podium finish definitely shows that they're on the right track. However, one track itself is definitely not enough to prove that they're back on top of their game, and the recent statements from Mercedes and Aston Martin show that the battle between these two teams will be a lot more anticipated in Montreal. Will Mercedes prove that the Barcelona race was not a one-off after their worrying statements about the newest upgrade package? In order for us to understand this question, we need to analyze why Aston Martin's pace was so off in Barcelona. This is a circuit that takes a lot of toll on the tires due to the combination of medium and high-speed corners. And while the AMR23 proved to be a great car to circuits that had similar requirements as Barcelona, this time their pace was nowhere near the Ferrari of Sites and both of the Mercedes cars. Yes, it is true that Alonso's floor damage saw him drop back in the last qualifying session, but him being passed by both Perez and Russell without any competition whatsoever, as well as his teammate Stroll, only goes to show that the AMR23 is a car that is yet to be worked on. On the other hand, Mercedes found massive improvements with their newest upgrade package, but there are a lot of factors that helped them achieve the results they did, which has been acknowledged by the team and the drivers itself. The cooler temperatures during the qualification and the race event compared to the free practices were the main reason as to why the W14's tyres were working to the great extent they did, as said by Wolf. Kudos to them for doing a great job and I sincerely hope this trend will continue in the upcoming events as well. But from what's been said by the team's principal of Aston Martin and Mercedes, the W14's comeback is far from completed. Aston Martin is the only team on the grid that hasn't brought a major upgrade package to the AMR23. And due to Alonso's early statement in 2023 that the car will see around two-thirds of it being changed, it shouldn't surprise us if we see a massive change in the look of the most positive surprise on the grid in 2023. Yes, their design works, and the side pods are something that will be kept as it is. But according to the renowned media that is very close to F1, Martin Whitmarsh confirmed that upgrades for Montreal are on the way. The only part that could be more similar to the car that the AMR23 has drawn massive inspiration from the RB18 is the floor, and after witnessing the majority of it from Monaco's racing weekend, the green Red Bull will bring a new floor to Montreal, according to reports. Auto Motor and Sports' Michael Schmidt said, That's what he, Martin, told me. He wouldn't tell me what it is, but I assume he was referring to a new floor, because they've already made detailed changes in other areas, and I think they'll continue with their side pod concept, as it works quite well. This is definitely a worrying fact of a Mercedes, and if you add the fact that Ferrari claimed to have brought the upgrades to the SF23 to the worst possible circuit for them, only goes to show that they're expected to be back in the fight for podium finishes sooner rather than later. As of now, it's not only Aston Martin and Ferrari who believe that Mercedes' pace was just a one-off show in Barcelona, but the team itself seems to not put a lot of trust in the entire upgrade package in terms of keeping the competition behind and secure the second place in Constructors' Championship with ease. Crack was asked about whether he feels the change in the momentum has already been implemented, and the Silverstone-based squad has lost the edge to Mercedes, something to which he replied, No, I don't think so. Because when we looked later in the race, when we had the hard tyres on, for example, we were completely in the game again compared to the competitor. So we really need to understand what happened at the beginning there. It went obviously overcast very quickly, from very sunny to overcast, which we thought would help the soft tyres. But what seems to be the issue with Mercedes, after both Russell and Hamilton claimed that the W14 felt the best way it could have possibly felt throughout the entire weekend? Obviously, changing the narrative in such a tight economic era is a very difficult task, and only the masterminds of Nui and Allison would be capable of doing such a thing. However, Nui doesn't have to add entirely new and innovative parts to the RB19 in a bid to catch up half a second of advantage to the cars ahead of them. This is an issue that has been stressed out by Mercedes, and according to Andrew Shovlin, the latest package that has been brought to the W14 has taken a huge chunk of the budget cap, especially the front suspension. While the performance boost was definitely a nice takeaway from the Barcelona Grand Prix, if the car doesn't prove to be the second fastest in a bid to try for occasional wins, Mercedes will be limited in the remainder of the season in terms of bringing more upgrades to the W14. And I know for a fact that the floor of the car needs to be changed, because if you look at how the RB19's floor complexity and dynamics are making the car greater, there is certainly a lot of work for all the other constructors. Yet, the money is just not there. And when talking about this matter, Andrew added, Basically, we made a new suspension, and suspension is expensive to make, and to fit to the car. So the reality is that with the budget cap, we're always looking at our situation in this World Championship. 
We don't know how many things we're going to do. I don't expect to make any leaps and bounds. What we understand is that there is quite a rich development stand that we can look at. So our programs are working. The challenge is always to get aerodynamics and vehicle dynamics to work together and optimized. And every team goes through that kind of process. But it's about seeing where the opportunities are and how you can bring the two together so that they succeed to function as a single package. Yet this doesn't seem to be the only issue that Mercedes is facing as the new side pod design is also brought under a question mark back in Brackley. The stellar performance in Barcelona and the double podium finish didn't seem to be enough for Wolf to accept that the old side pod design should be trashed and the new, more traditional approach is the correct one. This is primarily due to the fact that the side pod design in and of itself is far from the only solution for the issue that kept Mercedes stuck at bay for 18 months. The entirety of the new design is good and that needs to be emphasized as well but it seems like the team believes that the performance the car has gained is more from the floor changes as well as the new front suspension, the two costliest parts of the newest package. Now, although the floor is the one that needs to be further developed into a state that would be very similar to the RB19, Mercedes expressed concerns about the current state of their chassis, one that does not allow them to mount any kind of side pod or floor design. So, while this issue will be further addressed in 2024, we're hoping that Mercedes would enter the remainder of the 2023 campaign with a bit more confidence after the strong finish in Barcelona. But according to the F1 journalist Christian Manath, Wolf is not convinced that the side pod design should remain as it is. And when talking about this matter, he added, What is a concept? You've heard that question from the Mercedes engineers quite a lot. We were talking to Andrea Stella, and he was talking about side pods and why these wide side pods work better with this generation of cars and bring the best out of the floor because everyone is talking about the floor. The floor is the big performance differentiator because 40% of the total downforce is generated by the floor, but the floor has to work and it doesn't work in isolation. Toto said they just wanted to take something out of the equation. He's still not convinced that the concept of these side pods is the better one. They just wanted to take something out of the equation to be sure where the problem is. This opinion was further echoed by Russell, who said that if Red Bull were to mount the no pod side pod design on the RB19, they'd still be the fastest car on the grid. And according to Horner, the Formula One world shouldn't be overhyped for the comeback the Mercedes did in Barcelona, because at the end of the day, they still finished 24 seconds behind Verstappen, which is more than the average time lost in the pit stop in this particular race, 22 seconds. In general, Mercedes has a lot to prove to the F1 world, but as of now, the news that are coming from Brackley are certainly worrying to the extent of the Silver Arrows losing the second spot in the Constructors' Championship once their customer team comes with this massive upgrade in Montreal. If we are to trust Alonso's words, the AMR23 will crush the competition at the upcoming race, and the one-show performance in Barcelona from Mercedes will be quickly forgotten. To top that off, Ferrari is also expecting a competitive weekend, and Montreal will be the race in which Mercedes will have a lot of burden on their shoulders to prove that they haven't won eight constructors' championships on pure luck. But it was the genius minds that are now trying to put the car where it's supposed to be, first after the chequered flag. Thanks for watching, and if you want to know more about how Mercedes could beat Red Bull's dominance this season, then click on the video that's appearing on the screen now.